channel or welcome if you're new. Today we're going to be talking about shipping. In particular, we're going to discuss how I ship my acrylic pieces and then also I'm going to give some tips and tricks for beginners shipping with USPS. When you start your own business, shipping can be really overwhelming in the beginning. I wanted to go ahead and share a few tips and tricks with you guys that I have learned along the way. I am in no way an expert when it comes to shipping, but I have learned a few things that I think will be able to help you guys too. Understanding the logistics behind shipping can really help you in the beginning when you do start your business. When I first started my business, I was very scared of shipping and it almost stopped me from starting my business altogether because it was just something I didn't know much about. So I wanted to make this video just to give any tips and tricks for beginners and encourage you guys that shipping is not as bad as it seems in the beginning. Once you get to know what you're doing and you kind of learn the way that the USPS system works, you should have no problems at all. There are three main shipping services that most small businesses use. That's USPS, FedEx, and UPS. I personally choose to use USPS for all of my orders because they're convenient, it's affordable, and it's super easy. The first thing to understand when shipping with USPS is the way that they actually calculate the shipping. They can either go by the dimensions of the box, the weight of the box or the package, and then also where you're shipping it to. And with that comes in the different classes of shipping. If your package weighs under a pound, which most of mine do for my business, you will be using first class mail to ship that package. That's gonna be the least expensive way to ship it. So anything under one pound would be first class mail. Anything over a pound, you're gonna get into the priority mail rates. Now these are the more expensive rates and there are many, many different classes when it comes to that. It's actually a little bit confusing when you start looking at it, but depending on what you're shipping, how heavy your items are, you might wanna go ahead and go online and just do a little bit more research about the classes. I'm only gonna get into what I personally use so I just use the regular priority mail. I don't use any of the flat rates, the regional rate or anything like that. My items are not that heavy except for my larger signs. So I typically only will use the regular priority mail. I will leave a link to the USPS website down below so you guys can look at the different classes and see what would work best for your items. Another super cool thing about USPS is that you can go on their website and actually order free boxes from them that they will ship to you that you can ship your products out in. I personally do use these boxes whenever I'm shipping certain items, but I also have my own boxes that I bought off of Amazon that I will show you guys here in a little bit. I will leave the link for ordering the boxes on the USPS website down below for you guys. Whenever you're at the post office, you can also ask for these little shipping bins that they'll give you that you can bring home and just use whenever you're taking your items from your car into the post office. They're super easy and super handy whenever you're having like a bunch of small packages. That way you don't have to like tote a big bag or anything. You have this crate that you can use to carry it on it. With USPS, you can also schedule a pickup. That way they will actually come to your house and get your packages from you. Now, I have heard some horror stories with this before. I would never leave my packages on the front porch for the mailman to get. I have always heard really bad things about that, so don't ever do that. But if you do wanna set up a pickup from the post office, for some reason, if you don't have time to go to the post office that day, or if you're shipping out a lot of items and you just can't get it all by yourself, go ahead and schedule a pickup. Like I said, don't leave it on your porch. Just let the mailman actually knock on your door and then just hand them to him there, and then they will scan them and ship them out for you. It's really nice that they do that for us business owners. One tip that I have for you guys is to always, always, always weigh your package fully packaged taped up and everything before you buy your shipping label the reason i say that is because if the weight is off on your shipping label they will either send it back to you or they will charge you extra for the shipping label or they will charge your customer extra because you didn't pay enough for the label. So you definitely don't want that to happen. Always weigh your package and make sure that you have the correct weight in there uh, before you actually buy and print the label. Another tip for you guys is to keep your shipping as cheap as possible. And by that, I mean don't go all out on your fancy, fancy decoration for your package or anything. Now, once you do grow your business, adding those personal touches and like custom labeling, custom tape and boxes and all that is really cool to have and I want to have that one day too but it's also very pricey 
Um, so in the beginning, I would say just keep your shipping as cheap as possible. Use those free USPS boxes, or you can just get boxes on Amazon too. You can get white ones or whatever you're going for with your aesthetic, but just keep it as cheap as possible. That way you're not coming out of pocket so much on the shipping end, and you're kind of messing with your profit that way. So also factoring in that shipping cost into your product is also a smart thing to do too. Um, like if you're paying a dollar and 50 cents for like the box, the tissue paper, stickers, if you want to calculate everything up and it's like a dollar 50 for shipping per item or whatever, go ahead and factor that into your item cost. That way um, you're not messing with your profits too much. Every order that I ship out is either placed through my own website or through my Etsy shop. So with that, I'm actually able to print my shipping labels from each of those different sites. And so it's really easy on the back end to do that. Now, if you don't have a website and you don't have an Etsy shop set up just yet, you can use a website called pirateship.com. I will link that down below for you guys as well. I have used it a few times just to ship things to like friends and family, and it really does give you a really good price. So now I'm going to go ahead and get into the demonstration of how I package and ship my smaller acrylic pieces. I'm going to make a separate video for how I package and ship my larger acrylic pieces like my acrylic signs and things like that. Okay, now let's get on over to the demonstration. The items that we're going to be packaging up today are an acrylic cake topper, a 5 inch acrylic pregnancy announcement, a set of 12 4 inch baby milestones, and an 8 by 10 sign. On the day that I'm making this video, I I actually don't have any open orders currently because I am still on my vacation. I just took a little break, a little mental health break for a little while. Last year was really great in my business, very, very busy. I closed down for Christmas and I wanted to take a little break just to recoup, spend time with my family, and just to kind of take a deep breath for a little while. So these are just sample items that I have here that I've made in the past. And then this one here is just a blank piece of white acrylic that I thought we would package up. Just like a few mock packaging here. The first thing that we'll package up is the cake topper. For the cake topper, you will need your cake topper. I did actually go ahead and cut out in um, just to fit just to this size. I think it's eight inches by five inches here. And I just cut out some cardstock paper to fit and then I cut little slits there. That way it could um, just kind of weave in there. Then I put a little logo sticker on it. This is how I do all of my cake toppers. So for this, you just need the cake topper, a six by nine cello bag, some tape and some bubble wrap. And then you need your box that you'll be packaging it in as well. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and make the box. So I'm just gonna put this together. And then you're gonna go ahead and put your cake topper. Um, what I do like to do also is whenever I'm about to ship something out, I like to go ahead and just kind of wipe off the um, excess like open areas where there's no vinyl, just so I can see if there's any fingerprints, make sure you get off anything like that to where the, um, the acrylic looks really nice and shiny. So now I'm gonna go ahead and put this into the cello bag. And then I do like to fold it over here and tape it just so it fits like perfectly inside this bag. And just fold this over and there's that. And then I will usually go ahead and get the bubble wrap but then I also will do some tissue paper. Then I take my box and I just put it in like this. And then I will get, oh, you do need scissors for this as well. Um, and then I'll get my bubble wrap and I'll just cut like, not even a full foot, um, just maybe like three fourths of a foot or something like that. And then I will lay that in there, put the cake topper, and then I'll put one of my thank you cards and a little handout here that just says like tag us on social media. And then what I do is I will fold the tissue paper over. I'll get some logo stickers. 
fold this over. And I'll just put a sticker there to hold that, and then I'll just kind of fold those. And then just seal it on up. There we go. And then, of course, if this was a real package for a customer, I would go ahead and put um, like some fragile stickers, and then I would also put their shipping label here with a logo sticker and a thank you sticker as well. And that's it for the cake topper. Now for the five inch acrylic pregnancy announcement, I'm gonna go ahead and just wipe this down and get any little fingerprints or anything that might be on it. And then I'll take a piece of wax paper or like parchment paper. I'm gonna put that behind it. I'll use, this is just a four inch one. I'll usually use the same size as the round. I'll use five inch. So for this one, I would use five inch or whatever size. Like I have six inch ones too. So if I had a six inch one I, I was using, then I would use a six inch piece of wax paper. This is just a four inch one that I had on hand, but I'll put that behind it so that that paint doesn't stick to my cello bag. So I'll go ahead and put it into the cello bag here with that little piece of wax paper behind it. And so just like the cake topper, I will fold this over and tape, peel that, and then fold this to where it fits nice and snug. And then for this, I will usually add a little logo sticker, like wherever I think it would look the cutest. So maybe like right here on the bottom. So there's that. And then I'm going to put it into a bubble wrap. So I just have these little bubble wrap. They're kind of like little pouches, I guess that's how you can explain it. Um, so I'll go ahead and put it into a bubble wrap pouch and then go ahead and seal this up. And then I'll fold this over and tape it. You can also just use like a plain like roll of bubble wrap if you don't have the pouch. The pouch thing is just something new that I've been doing. You can totally just use plain bubble wrap for this, which I used to do. I just saw these little pouches on Amazon and I was like, oh, okay, well let's try that. Um, so I guess I'll do that. And then I have actually upgraded um, from boxes. So I used to put my, my six inch and my five inch round um, items into boxes, which can be pricey. So boxes are way more expensive than like bubble mailers or poly mailers. I could make it cheaper. I was thinking, why don't I just go ahead and use bubble mailers? So I tried it out a few times and I did contact the customer asking if it got there okay and if there was any damage. And they said, no, everything was fine. So bubble mailers it is. So this one would fit perfectly here. This is also a six by nine bubble mailer. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that in there. So I went ahead and put these stickers on. It just says, please do not bend. And then there's a fragile sticker on the back with the same, please do not bend. I'll go ahead and put this in there. And I'll link all this stuff down below for you guys, just so you can see what products I'm using. And then I would add my thank you card in that same little card there that I talked about before. I'll just slide those in there. Along with, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'll also add the customer's um, packing slip as well. And then I'll go ahead and fold this over, which I kind of don't want to waste this one, but I'll go ahead and fold it over and then put a little sticker there, put the, uh, the packing slip on this side. And then that is how I pack my five inch and my six inch round um, acrylic pieces. Now we'll move on to baby milestones. So this is a little bit heavier. So everything else is very light that I do of my like smaller pieces. Baby milestones are the heaviest. So depending on which package the customer chooses, if they choose just like the 12, um, 12 rounds, which is just like one month through one year, then that's, I think it's like 14 ounces or so. But if they, get the 13 package which is if they want to add the hello world or like their baby's name that can get a little bit more pricey but this is the one that would be over a pound depending on the package that the customer orders so i'm going to go ahead and wipe these down and then i'll show you how i package them all up Okay, so now I'm gonna go ahead and stack them up. So what I do is I'm gonna put some four inch wax paper pieces in between each baby milestone. I like to start with the one year piece at the bottom. So I'll put a, a piece of paper there and then I'll stack one year. And then I'll just go through and do 
down to where it says hello world will be the top. So I just kind of go down um, month by month. After that, I'm gonna go ahead and wrap it in bubble wrap. I just use like, like a 12 inch piece here, maybe like a 12 by 12. So I'll just put this right in the middle. I'll get my tape and then I will just kind of fold this over. I actually like to add, right before I do this, I like to add that little card there for the customer. And then I'll fold this over, add a tape. And then same thing the other way. Fold the, add the tape. And then I will put them into a canvas bag. So this bag is six inches by I think 7.9 inches. I'll link these down below for you guys if you're interested. But these bags, I like to give to the customers just to help them keep track of all the milestones. And whenever I send this out, I typically will have HTV ironed on here. It's that will usually say baby's first year. Um, I think it's just a really cute touch and the customers have really liked that. I didn't have any of those ready to go, so I just grabbed a blank one. But I'm gonna go ahead and put these into this bag. Alrighty. Next, you're gonna get your box. So this is a seven by five inch box. Sometimes I'll add in some tissue paper or like some honeycomb paper, which I'll go ahead and do that just to show you guys the honeycomb paper. So I'll just put this. And then you just stretch it like this and it kind of acts as your packing paper. Like instead of putting bubble wrap in there, in there you can just do this honeycomb paper. So I'll just stuff that down in there and then I will put my baby milestones, their thank you card, and then their packing slip in here as well. So now I'm just gonna, gonna fold this over. And then I'll put a logo sticker that way. And then I will put this over. Close it up there. So that is the baby milestones. And like I said before, if this was a real package, I would go ahead and put the packing slip here. I'll put like a fragile sticker on the back and then maybe like one on the side or something like that. And then I would actually tape the box up, of course. Okay, last item to package is our 8x10 sign, which like I said before, is just a blank piece of white acrylic because your girl is on a little vacation right now and I don't have any orders for this item. So we're just gonna package a blank piece of acrylic just so I can show you guys exactly what I do. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and get the cello bag. So typically my acrylic 8x10s are painted, so the back would be like um, paint, like kind of like the baby milestones in the five inch round, there would be paint on the back. So I would have to put like a piece of wax paper or something that's the same size as the um, 8x10. I would put that there and then I would put both of those. And then I would go ahead and fold this over and then rip that off, fold this over. And then if I'm feeling cute, I'll put a logo sticker there. Now I'm gonna go ahead and get this stand. So these are just the little stands that come with all of my signs. Um, I'll show you guys what they look like. I actually got these on Etsy, but I can't find the shop anymore. So I don't know where I'm gonna get them now, but they're just like these little stands. I'll put a picture here of what it looks like with that stand, like my eight by 10 signs. But this is the little stand. You just put um, one piece on each side and it just holds the stand up and it's so cute. But I'm gonna have to figure this out. Maybe I can get Simply Sally to cut me some of these with her new laser cutter. We'll see. So I'm gonna go ahead and put these into a little bag here. This is just um, another little cello bag. I'll have to link it down below for you guys because I am not sure of the size off the top of my head. I'm gonna go ahead and fold this over. And then I'm gonna tape it to the sign. Maybe I'll tape it like up here. And then I'll put the thank you card 
and the other little card there. And then you'll get your box. I use this size for any time uh, multiple items are ordered or all of my 8x10s, um, they get put into these boxes. So I'm going to go ahead and use that same honeycomb paper. So I like to do honeycomb paper and um, bubble wrap on these. So first I'll go ahead and put my paper in there. And then we're going to wrap this in bubble wrap. So we'll get our little piece here and we will just kind of fold this over, fold that over, tapey tape, and then we'll put it into this box here. You can also cut off the excess bubble wrap on the sides. I like to leave it because it gives like less wiggle room for the acrylic to really move around. And it kind of helps with the corners because it kind of um, will block the corners if like if the package gets bumped on the sides. Um, so there's that. I will put their packing slip and then I'm going to just fold these over. And put like either a thank you sticker or one of my logo stickers. I'll just do a logo sticker since I have these right here. I'll usually cut this a little bit longer to where it like covers, but there we go. Um, and then I'll fold this down. And that is that. So that is how I package all of my acrylic pieces. These are the main things that I sell in my shop. If you do have any questions, please do leave those down below. I would love to answer any questions that you guys have regarding shipping, packaging acrylics, anything like that. Honestly, you just want to bubble wrap as much as you can to um, really be sure that your item is going to get to the customer intact and not scratched or damaged. Um, but yeah, this is what I do and how I do it. All right, you guys, that is it for today. If you liked this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up before you go. And don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.